Hello and welcome to Everyday Mystic, an aid to your spiritual growth. Genesis chapter 1 is the first chapter of the Old Testament and is a fundamental text for understanding the origins of the world from a Judeo-Christian perspective. However, when analyzed through the lens of fourth-way esoteric Christianity, as espoused by Rebecca Nottingham, Maurice Nichol, and other thinkers within the school of thought, the chapter takes on a deeper significance. One of the fundamental ideas of fourth-way Christianity is that inside the biblical stories, fundamental truths about our spiritual condition are found, shrouded in symbolism. That all of these stories point to our inner lives and that the characters represent different aspects of ourselves. A favorite example of mine is the Pharisees. The reason is that, as painful it is to admit it, I've many times caught myself being a Pharisee, caught up in outward appearance, rather than being concerned with my inner life and my standing with God, and pointing my finger at others, rather than looking at myself. In other words, at the absolute foundation of esoteric Christianity is the idea that salvation is something much deeper than a mere intellectual realization, namely that the renewal of our minds refers to a complete transformation inside of ourselves. Therefore, the fourth-way approach to Christianity emphasizes the importance of direct experience and personal transformation in one's spiritual journey. It also places a great emphasis on the interconnectedness of all things and the idea that everything in the universe is part of a larger cosmic plan. These themes are present in Genesis chapter 1 and can be understood through a close analysis of the text. The chapter begins with the famous line, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This simple statement contains a wealth of meaning. First, it establishes the existence of a divine creator who is responsible for the creation of the world. This is a foundational belief of Judeo-Christian theology, but fourth-way Christianity places a greater emphasis on the idea that the divine is not separate from the world but is present within it, even though this is not meant in the pantheistic way, where God is limited to the creation. Rather, it is meant in the panentheistic way, where God is present in all of creation, but also extends infinitely beyond it. This means that the act of creation is ongoing and that the divine is continually manifesting itself in new ways. The phrase, the heavens and the earth, is also significant. In fourth-way Christianity, the heavens are often understood as a symbol for the spiritual realm, while the earth represents the material world. This distinction is important because it highlights the idea that there is a connection between the two realms. The divine is not only present in the spiritual world but also in the material world, and the keys for heaven are to be found within. The next few verses describe the act of creation, as God separates light from darkness and creates the sky, land, and seas. Each act of creation is described as a distinct event, but they are also part of a larger pattern. The separation of light and darkness, for example, is the first step in a process that leads to the creation of the sun, moon, and stars later in the chapter. This pattern of creation is significant because it emphasizes the interconnectedness of all things. Each act of creation is not isolated but is part of a larger process that leads to the creation of a complex and interconnected universe. This is an idea that is central to fourth-way Christianity, which emphasizes the importance of understanding the connections between different aspects of reality. The idea of the separation of light and darkness can also be seen as relating to our inner process, where we do just that. In fact, the more you look at the biblical narrative from this angle, the more you will find that it tells significant truths about our psychology. Yes, there is most definitely an exoteric narrative that should not be discounted, but when you see how it is inextricably linked to an esoteric side that points to our own individual journey, this takes on a whole new meaning. It does not at all invalidate the exoteric, but I would rather say that it make it even more fantastic, as this means that, not only did God cause history to unfold a certain way, God also wove in fundamental truths about our inner lives in it. As above, so below. In this context, the part about the how the sky was separated from the ocean is worth mentioning. This might be a stretch, but in analytical psychology, water is usually associated with chaos and the unconscious, while the sky is associated with consciousness and order. The chapter furthermore describes the creation of living creatures, including animals and humans. Again, each act of creation is described as a distinct event, but they are also part of a larger pattern. 
The creation of humans is the culmination of this process and is described as an act of divine intervention. God creates humans in his own image, which is a powerful symbol of the connection between the divine and the human. The creation of humans is also significant because it highlights the idea that humans have a special role to play in the universe. They are not just another species of animal but are created in the image of God and have a unique capacity for spiritual growth and transformation. This is a central belief in fourth-way Christianity, which emphasizes the importance of personal transformation in one's spiritual journey. We are divine creatures, and we need to separate the light from the darkness, so that we more and more start to embody this divinity. Finally, the chapter describes the Sabbath, which is the day of rest that God sets aside after completing the act of creation. This is a significant symbol because it emphasizes the importance of rest and rejuvenation in the spiritual journey. In Fourth Way Christianity, the idea of rest is often associated with the concept of inner stillness, which is essential for spiritual growth. In conclusion, Genesis chapter 1 is a fundamental text for understanding the origins of the world from a fourth-way esoteric Christian perspective. The chapter emphasizes the interconnectedness of all things, the ongoing nature of creation, and the importance of direct experience and personal transformation in one's spiritual journey. The concept of the Sabbath is also a significant theme in fourth-way Christianity, as it highlights the importance of inner stillness. The chapter highlights the importance of recognizing the divine within the world and within ourselves, and the importance of seeing the universe as a whole rather than as isolated parts. Finally, I don't want you to see this as a complete analysis of this story. I rather want you to see it as an invitation to look at the Bible in a new way. To start looking seriously at what the different biblical stories have to say about psychology, the human condition, and your personal journey with God. That's all for today. If you like the video, hit the like button, as this helps the video to get noticed. Also, feel free to share it on social media and other places. And if you want to see more of my content, subscribe to the channel. And hit the notification bell, so that you always get notified of new videos. I post content every day, and I do my best to always offer something valuable. Also, Check out the comment section and the description for other things that me and my wife are doing. Thank you for your time.